Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about moons. But specifically about moons that used to exist around all of our gas giants and ice giants and possibly planets and exoplanets out there in other star systems that eventually basically got lost in the middle of interstellar space. In other words, we're going to be talking about moons that actually did exist but are no longer there. Welcome to What The Math. So today we're going to be talking about moons of gas giants and moons that are most likely somewhere out there in interstellar space. And this is actually based on a research known as Innocent Bystanders, Orbital Dynamics of Exomoons During Planet-Planet Scattering. What exactly does that mean? Well, it actually refers to the idea of having several uh, objects, and in this case we're actually going to take a look at our solar system with all of the moons present here. So you can see there's moons of Jupiter right there, there's moons of Saturn. They basically form this very, very large orbit around the planet and uh, the ice giants Uranus and Neptune also have their own moons that have, uh, over the billions of years of existence, basically assumed a relatively stable position and orbit around these planets. But it turns out that uh, if you run the simulation, uh, specifically the so-called antibody simulation, where you place a bunch of planets that has just been created, with basically their moons around them. So uh, this is something that we could actually try in Universe Starbucks, but unfortunately we don't have the billions of years to wait for this. But if you run the simulation, and if you try to basically then look at what's left, you'll realize that, like for example for Jupiter, something like 80 to 90% of all of the moons that used to be here are no longer there. As a matter of fact, the scientists who did this study, they tried to simulate this many, many times, and without exceptions, because of the planetary interaction, basically because of the interaction between Jupiter and Saturn, Neptune and Uranus, Neptune and, and Jupiter, and so on and so forth, over time, the vast majority of these moons basically kind of disappear. Now, this also implies that the moons we have around Jupiter right now may also one day disappear, and only the moons that were within approximately 10% um, of the so-called hill sphere. Let me actually remind you what hill sphere means. Uh, we're going to take a look at Earth for this. Uh, so Earth's hill sphere is approximately 1.5 million kilometers. And it refers to the distance that's actually different for every pl planet and every object in our solar system. Um, it refers to the distance where you can actually have a stable orbit around an object. So here... This Mercury is not inside the heliosphere. It doesn't have a stable orbit around Earth. Here it is inside the heliosphere and it will have a relatively stable orbit uh, for as long as Earth stays in the same position around the Sun and maintains the same mass as well. So inside heliosphere, outside heliosphere. And for Earth, it's about 1.5 million kilometers. For Jupiter, it's like 100 million kilometers. So much, much higher. But for a moon, to maintain stable orbit over long periods of times, it needs to be within about 10% of a hill sphere. If you look at our moon, it is currently at a distance of about um, 380,000 kilometers away from Earth, which is over that 10%. In other words, uh, our own moon is already in jeopardy of basically over time being lost if there is a lot more interaction between Earth and other planets. Uh, so obviously this would not be um, sort of a short period of time, possibly billions of years, but if uh, one of the gas giants changes its path one day and starts orbiting somewhere else, there's a big chance we might also lose our own moon as well. But that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about the moons that used to be here. So Jupiter right now, um, as of today at least, has about 67 moons we've discovered, and with only some of them in this stable position of 10% of the hill sphere. These are so-called Galilean moons, so Io, Ganymede, Europa, and Callisto, and some of the smaller ones closer to it. The rest of them, so these other moons, the vast majority of them as a matter of fact, are outside of this stable region. And... If you do the math, about 80 to 90% uh, were there before as well, and now they're all gone. So what happened to the, basically something like 
300 to 600 moons that are missing from Jupiter and around the same missing from Saturn and so on. Well, this is where it gets a little, really interesting. So first of all, the scientists behind this paper imply that the vast majority of them, probably most of them as a matter of fact, probably ended up in the interstellar space. In other words, vast majority of these moons is in between stars, uh, possibly far, far away from our own solar system by now, but basically somewhere in this empty space in between stars. Uh, and it's not just moons, obviously, it's things like asteroids and comets as well, like the more recent uh, visitor Oumuamua was actually from this region. Um, but we never really think about the moons, right? So we, we've already discovered some um, so-called rogue planets orbiting, or not orbiting, but essentially moving in the interstellar space. But normally these are very, very large. We haven't really found any small ones yet. But we also haven't really found any moons. And based on the math and the calculations, it seems that a huge amount of these moons, a vast, vast uh, majority, as a matter of fact, of objects in the interstellar space would most likely be these so-called rogue moons. Moons that used to be around various star systems, including our own, and like 80 to 90% of them may have actually escaped and is just kind of flying through interstellar space right now. So somewhere out there, there's definitely a moon of Jupiter probably flying between stars. Or it used to be a moon of Jupiter, obviously, now it's not. What else could have happened to them, though? Well, some of them, as they got kicked out of the Jupiter system, may have actually assumed the same orbit and basically became the companions of Jupiter, the so-called uh, Trojans. So here we have a vast majority of uh, Jupiter's, so and this is actually from a simulation called uh, Jupiter's Trojans and Hildas. So here um, they are in the so-called orbit called uh, Lagrange point. And this is basically formed by drawing a line from Sun to Jupiter and Sun to this area. So this is about 60 degree angle. And this Lagrange point forms the first stable point around Jupiter's orbit. The second one is behind it, right there. So altogether, these also may actually represent the so-called lost moons of Jupiter. Now Saturn, though, doesn't have as many, so we don't really know what happened to Saturn's um, moons, because it most likely had just as many as Jupiter. But for Jupiter, it's also possible that a lot of them basically ended up colliding with other objects in our solar system. So, for one, this particular research may actually uh, give us the reason to believe that the Trojans of Jupiter may have actually previously been its moons. So there's um, a bit of evidence and a bit of indication that uh, these didn't really come from the asteroid belt, but they came directly from Jupiter's orbit. And to see if this is true, we'll need to basically study at some point uh, the uh, composition of Jupiter's moons and compare them to the composition of the Trojans that are right there. So that's uh, one of the possible explanations for where, where the moons went, except for, the, of course, interstellar space. And like I mentioned, the third explanation is that, well, a lot of those moons may have collided with other objects. As a matter of fact, there is a slight chance that one of these escaped moons, so either the moon of Jupiter or Saturn or any other object, at some point basically got flung out of the system. So let's do this to I right now. Basically got kicked out of the system, moving really, really fast. So it just kind of flew away and escaped the system because of the interaction with other objects. It was probably not from this region because, like I mentioned, this is a stable region. It was probably somewhere on the outskirts. And at some point, this object came really, really close to our planet Earth and basically collided with it, thus creating the system we have today of the modern Earth with its um, beautiful companion, the moon. So we know this actually is very likely how the moon was created. We just don't know where this so-called Theia, not Io, of course, Theia came from. But uh, modern research indicates that the collision with this primordial object most likely created the moon. And the research uh, behind the missing moons does mention that a lot of these moons may have actually collided with other planets in our solar system. So for all we know, um, the so-called late uh, heavy bombardment may also have been influenced by the fact that there were so many moons uh, disappearing and missing from the solar system. Well, anyway, 
that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And I wanted to kind of present you with an idea that not only are we missing a lot of asteroids and comets in our solar system, but we're also missing a huge amount of moons that may have been present orbiting around both Jupiter and Saturn, and of course other objects as well, that basically disappeared because of the interaction with each other. And this research, uh, having run hundreds and thousands of simulations, basically indicates that this is probably what happened. And this is probably uh, a pretty good indication what happens in other star systems. In other words, the vast majority of interstellar space collisions and other objects in similar orbit as gas giants may have actually been their own moons. So here we're going to try to add as many as we can just to simulate what Jupiter's system may have looked like uh, before all of this happened. So we're going to try to add a few hundred. And I think I'm going to stop here because my computer is getting really slow. And if we enable orbits, there you go. This is more likely is the face of ancient Jupiter and its uh, moon system. So there you have it, the moons are gone, and they are orbiting the interstellar space and our galaxy somewhere out there. Or maybe just maybe one of them will actually come back for a visit and uh, return back to our solar system. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye bye. And just before we finish this, Let's just uh, do one more thing. Let's destroy Jupiter and see what happens to all of these beautiful moons if there is no more Jupiter in the middle. And here we go.